Here in FEU, we stand for future ready learning. For continued education, not just for our students, but also for ourselves. Because by learning more about our students, we learn how to be better educators. For educational innovations, because better, more responsive teaching techniques that put emphasis on learning instead of just passing, help our students be better prepared for the future, for turning knowledge into wisdom, not just accumulating it, so we can fulfill the potential of every student to be a future leader, and not just an achiever. We are FEU, and we stand for a future-ready generation. We stand for future ready learning. Welcome to Far Eastern University. Here are some reminders from the FEU Office of Education Technology. Join 15 minutes before the start of the event. Make sure to dress appropriately. Remember that this is a formal engagement in an online setting. Check your Wi-Fi connection before joining. Familiarize yourself with features you may need to use such as mute, unmute, stop start video, and screen share. Mute your mic when not talking. Use the raise hand button if you want to speak. Find a quiet place without interruptions. Be aware that you are on camera. Avoid doing things that may cause distraction. Use appropriate equipment for the webinar. If you're using your mobile phone, please use a headset to reduce the noise that they pick in your location. Please avoid using a speaker. When asking a question, always state your name and your institute department first before throwing in your questions. Also, please make your voices clearly heard. If you are tuned into our social media accounts, please state your nickname, department, and your question. Do not spam the chat box. Always be courteous and do not engage in a chat with others while the webinar is ongoing. The organizers reserve their right to disengage anyone who will not follow the guidelines. We are now ready to start our event. Mabuhay mula sa mga tamaraw. This is FEU's Institute of Education Graduate Online Academic Lecture Series. 
So this Gadget Online Academic Lecture Series will feature another special topic in online education. Today, we specifically feature a topic on continuing professional development. So this is already our 10th of the lecture, or of the many lectures that we've had this year in the Institute of Education, Gadget Studies, and Transnational Education. And we are glad that we are conducting this to feature one of our competent faculty in the department or in the institute. On behalf of our Dean, Dr. Harold John Kalala, I welcome all our participants from FEU and our other campuses and other institutions, including our international partner from Adamas University of India, who have joined us here on Zoom or who are watching us on Facebook Live. So this free online lecture is our way of extending our, our gratitude, ourselves, as we maintain academic competence and professional excellence. It is part of our commitment to provide trainings to students and teachers and maintain a roster of competent faculty who are research-oriented, technology-advanced, and who are very much eager to help not only our students, but also teachers. With this, it is my pleasure to introduce you to one of our camp competent faculty in the Institute who will serve as our speaker in this afternoon's lecture. So Mabu, as he is recognized not only locally, but also in the international context, is a graduate of PhD in Applied Linguistics. Actually, he um, um, is currently um, completing and is done as a candidate in um, De La Salle University. He holds an international TESOL certificate from Arizona State University. He is also an alumnus of the U.S. Department of State's e-teacher program. Sir Mabu is trained under the University of Oregon and Portland State University, an advocate of continuing professional development, making him the best resource person for the topic this afternoon. He has presented several papers in various places, in several countries in Asia, Australia, and even in the USA. In fact, his most recent publication is a book chapter on MOOC camps in the Philippines with, Rout with Routledge's Online Educators for Teachers of English as a Global Language, published in 2020. He currently serves as a strand coordinator for personal and professional development at CESOL International Association. I think of all of these that I've mentioned, I'm most happy to announce as well that he is a professorial lecturer of English in the Institute of Education. He's a good friend of mine, one of my um, models in, in the Institute and in the academe. So it is my pleasure to introduce to you our speaker this afternoon, Sir Mabu, Sir Ramwalga Mabuan. Good afternoon, Sir. Hello, Dr. Chini. Thank you very much for such a very generous introduction. And good afternoon, everyone. I am very happy and pleased that you are here today. I know you may be busy doing other things, but you are here. Don't worry. We will be all learning together for, for an hour, and you will be getting something that I'm sure will be worthwhile and useful in your own professional development. Okay, let me share my slides. Um, before we formally begin, I'd like to request everyone to kindly uh, join in at zetings.com. That's Z-E-E-T-I-N-G-S dot com slash Mabu1 for us to have a full engagement during this webinar. Please don't leave Zoom, just open your browser and type zipings.com slash Mabuan. Okay, I also, uh, okay, yeah, it's in the chat box. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chini. Okay, uh, we'll give you a, a minute to do that. So let's see how many are in already. Okay, so right now we have we have six. I'd like you to experience uh, zitings.com because uh, some of you here may be educators or teacher trainers. Um, zitings is a very useful way in conducting classes and training. 
unlike Zoom, Zittings has interactive features that you could use. And this is for free. Okay, so right now we have over 20 uh, participants already on Zittings. We have 74 on uh, Zoom. Even if you're watching live on Facebook right now, you can also uh, join us uh, via Zipping. Okay. So we already have over 30 people on Zipping. So I think we can begin. The others can just join. Okay, foremost, uh, let me know your background. What is your current profession? If you're on Zipping, please select the one that best describes you. Okay, so we could see here now real-time answers. Majority of our participants this afternoon are teachers, some are administrators, professional, non-educators. There are also some graduate students and undergraduate students. Okay, I'm happy we have um, heterodyne participants today. Whatever your profession, I'm sure that you could get something worthwhile this afternoon. Okay, thank you for the responses. Next. So those who responded, uh, educators, uh, may I know which subjects do you currently teach? You can just key in uh, a word, for instance, English or math, science. Oh, okay. So we have here participants, uh, okay, majority are English teachers, but this is very interesting. Some are teaching math, Filipino, physics. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for responding. Again, whatever your profession is, I'm sure you could get something from uh, today's engagement. Thank you for the responses. And please tell us your current location. You can just encode your city or province. Wow, this is very interesting. We are geographically diverse. You know what, this is one of my uh, most favorite things about online uh, things like this, virtual engagement. It's inclusive, right? Uh, wherever we may be, we could just participate. So we have participants from Phnom Penh, Cambodia, Manila, Makati, and different provinces in the Philippines. Thank you very much for being here this afternoon and joining us. Thank you and welcome again to Far Eastern University. Finally, one adjective to describe your feeling today. Let me know. In my case, um, I'm, yeah, <laughs> okay. That's it, I'm very excited. Okay, we feel the same thing. Okay, some are feeling hot. Is it because of the climate? <laughs> Happy, blessed, okay. Wow, all, I think all positive. Thank you very much for responding. Okay, now we can begin. The teachers are the key to achieving all of the Sustainable Development Goal 4. We have the Global Goals 2030, and especially these days in the pandemic context, the teachers are also called the educational frontliners. And we are being asked to do so many things, right? I'm sure some of the teachers here are already feeling stressed or pressured with the tasks that are given to us, but we don't have a choice, right? We are the shapers of the young generation. So we have to keep on going. In particular, SDG4 quality education has several targets 
And I'd like you to focus on target 4C, increase the supply of qualified teachers in developing countries. This afternoon's topic focuses on this one, although it could encompass the other target on providing quality education. But having quality teachers is, for me, the most important ingredient in providing quality education because the teachers are the transmitters and producers of knowledge. And I'm glad that you are here so that we could learn with and from one another. In fact, this is also aligned with our very own Professional Development Plan 2022, which also aims to revitalize the country's current education system and furthermore aligns with Ambition Not in 2040, which prioritizes education services, formal education, and retooling services. The teacher is the key agent in any education system. Do you agree? We have a very important role to do, especially in challenging times, such as the time that we are currently in. So in this webinar, we will be focusing on how we as educators or professionals or future professionals and educators could equip and empower ourselves so that we could face the challenges, not only of this pandemic situation, but beyond, right? By doing continuing professional development. I strongly believe that it's not enough to just have a university degree or a master's degree or a PhD degree. Lifelong learning should be a lifetime event. Agree? Hence, CPD is an important aspect in our lives. After that, we'll focus on professional development and quality education. Is there a link? Then we proceed to sharing some of the online professional development practices. And I'll share with you some practices. Then we'll end with an open forum. For the purposes of this webinar, CPD is defined as the intentional maintenance and development of the knowledge and skills needed to perform in a professional context. I'd like to focus on the word development. For me, it implies an ongoing process. It's, it never stops. Hence, we have concepts such as lifelong learning. Right? Despite of our hectic schedules and the pressures that we have in our own work context, it's, it's important that we find time to continuously improving. Good teachers are lifelong learners, according to EW, and being an accomplished teacher is a career-long work in progress and educators who are lifelong learners are more successful. Do you agree with this? You may use your thumbs up button. I, I, I'm highlighting all of this because I truly believe in all of these statements. That's why uh, ever since I am a staunch advocate for continuing professional development. We simply can't give what we don't have. So PD here is defined as activities that develop an individual skills, knowledge, expertise, and other characteristics as a teacher. But I'd like to add another definition of PD, which shows that it is more of a process, not just focusing on the content. It's about teachers learning, learning how to learn and transforming their knowledge into practice for the benefit of their students, students' cross. I think this is really the, the main point why we need to keep on learning. At the end of the day, what is the use of our degrees, of our certificates, if we don't integrate that into our practices, right? It should be our students who should benefit 
from the professional development that we do. I have here my friend, uh, Mr. Nelson Del Mundo, master teacher from DepEd Laguna, who's also a boot camp leader in Laguna, who I would say a model teacher because uh, when the pandemic struck, he has actively and passionately engaged in professional development. Okay, um, Sir uh, Nelson, are you here? Please unmute. Um, could you share with us very quickly, why do you engage in professional development? Okay, so thank you, Kapatid Namagu, for uh, welcoming me here in your webinar. So I actually engage in, ex, uh, in uh, PD or professional development, of course, for extra support. Uh, so we juggle on overwhelming issues such as instruction, curriculum, culture, operations, and test preparations, specifically now in the time of pandemic. So support is very important to everyone, specifically to us educators. Uh, apart from that is uh, professional development is most effective when it occurs in the context of educators' daily work. So since we are all teachers, uh, though there are, uh, there, there are uh, participants here who do not belong to the education uh, sector, but then as regard to uh, education, uh, helping each other and assistance from our colleagues uh, really played a vital role. And the last one, the, the third one, why I participated in professional development is that online professional development is useful for learning content and observing while participating on real-time discussion. So we can get uh, some information that is very beneficial to us by attending professional uh, development program, apart from the certificate that we receive. Uh, that's all. Thank you, Mabu. Thank you very much, Sir Nelson, Sir Diu, and Kapatid for sharing. He's an educator and highly passionate in professional development. Thank you. That is very inspiring. And I totally agree with you uh, when you gave those reasons why you engage in professional development. That's wonderful. Um, Del Monte stated that quality teachers make quality schools. And quality schools, of course, produce quality students. Do you agree with that? Uh, those who are on zipping, uh, please press thumbs up if you agree or down if you don't. Okay, so we could see now a real time response from our participants. Yeah, uh, I, I totally agree with this one. <clears throat> it's with the quality of the teachers that we produce quality education. And in effect, we produce quality graduates and quality citizens. At the end of the day, uh, whatever outcome we have, it would be for the nation building. Okay, one or two disagrees. Okay, for some reasons. Maybe you could share that in the chat box. And the quality of an education system cannot exceed the quality of its teachers. I, I agree. Whatever quality you have, then that will that's what you can offer to the public, to your clientele. Hence, it is important that in having quality teachers, that the teachers, we as educators, should continuously engage in professional development. And research have shown that there is a positive association between student achievement and teachers' academic skills, level of content knowledge, years of experience, and participation in content-related professional development opportunities, okay? So it's been researched extensively already. Those educators who continuously engage in professional development naturally become quality educators. But of course, 
there is always the process of integrating, abusing what we get from the professional development that we have. And continuing professional development is a keystone in strengthening educators' performance levels and raising student achievement. That is well-researched and that is given already. In fact, in the Philippines, professional development is also highlighted. We have several republic acts, acts which have provisions that stress the need for sustained efforts to support the professional growth and development of all teaching and non-teaching personnel. We even have the Continuing Professional Development Act of 2016. Um, although it, it became uh, a little controversial, but whatever the provisions are, I, I would really believe that CPD is important, not only for the educators, but for all professions. As previously mentioned, it's not enough that we engage in PD. It should result in consumption in the classroom. That's why in this framework, Continuing Professional Development Framework for Teachers, designed by the British Council, they provided four stages of development, awareness, understanding, engagement, and integration. We shouldn't stop in the awareness level, just hearing the professional practice. We have to go to the next level, which is understanding the meaning of that professional practice and why it is significant for us. And finally, we have to aim to the next stages. Number three is engagement. We have to demonstrate competency Whatever in our professional work. Are, We've I, been I would... doing that as educators. And finally, demonstrate a high level of competency in this professional development through integration in our work. Whatever we learn from our professional development engagement should translate in our pedagogical practices and benefit our students, schools, and communities. And so the need for leadership for continuing professional development is important. Research has shown that teachers should be supported by those who are in power, their supervisors, principals, in their pursuit for professional development. For without this support, our educators may not find the opportunity or the passion to continue learning for themselves and for their students. We have here another visitor I'm very happy and pleased that she is here with us, Assistant Schools Division Superintendent, Ms. Rebecca Sagot of the Division of Davao del Norte. And she's also a MOOC guru in the Philippines. Uh, Ms. Rebecca, please tell us why it is important for leaders to encourage teachers to engage in PD. Hello everyone and good afternoon and thank you Romualdo for inviting me here. Certainly, leadership is very much needed, especially in promoting professional development, inasmuch as this is part of the performance standards also for teachers, most especially in, in the public schools. And I believe this is the same case with those teachers in the private uh, institutions. And the, the, for the kind of leadership that we have to manifest shall be a leadership that would be done by example. Like in my case, I am an assistant superintendent and I, I enjoin teachers to join massive open online courses because I'm facilitating MOOC camps. But I myself shall also enroll every time uh, I enjoin teachers to join massive open online courses because how can we say something about the thing when we haven't experienced this at all? So leadership by example is very much important in promoting CPD actually. Thank you very much. Okay, she is our role model, actually. She may be, may be very busy in her work, but 
right now we are actually having an online professional development journey together and would stay up late just to continue learning. Okay, thank you very much, Miss Rebecca. We are indeed living in the most challenging times in our lives. We live in a VUCA world where volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity flourish. We have this pandemic, we have the transition from face-to-face -to, -face to online education, and we were caught unawares of this situation. But despite these challenges and perplexities, what can we do? We have to continue learning, right? Um, we have to learn how digital education is done, how to de deliver curriculum to our students in different modalities. According to OECD, the three most important needs of educators during this pandemic are the curriculum resources, professional development resources, and the tools. For the curriculum resources, these are the, the books, the materials, etc. And we'd like to focus on number two. Tools, of course, would uh, mean learning management systems, virtual platforms, and other ways, okay? Other tools that we use to engage with our students. Number two, professional development resources, uh, as highlighted by OECD is significant because educators this day should rethink, reconfigure, and redefine the way they teach. We cannot just teach the way we did um, pre-COVID. The COVID era has presented us a different perspective on what education is and how to deliver quality education to our students. That's why we need to continue educating ourselves, finding the right formula or the best solution in this context. But I'm sure most of you would agree that CPD can be very costly. Well, thanks to some free conferences, free webinars, but if you attend high-end conferences, you, you normally have to pay, right? We spend our time, we spend money for training and coaching, for administration, for materials, equipment, and facilities. And if you want to attend a conference in another country, for instance, or another location, travel and transportation, and then conference fees, which is not possible, especially for those who don't have the budget, right? Or low resource educators and areas. In particular, CPD is in crisis in the world's poorest in most fragile countries. It may include some parts here in the Philippines. So we would like to really share with everyone that what we found with our group here at MUCAM Philippines, I have my, my colleagues here and friends, that online professional development is the key. And this online professional development could be quality and can be taken by anyone at any time, wherever they may be, in the Philippines or in the world. TALIS in 2018 provided types of professional development could be courses or workshops, education conferences or seminars, qualification programs, observation visits to schools, and many more. I'm sure some of us have been engaging or were able to engage in these types of PD, pre-COVID and during COVID. Well, Gable categorized professional development into three. Could be standardized, such as uh, <clears throat> training sessions, especially from schools, site-based, such as um, those training conducted by resource centers or teacher training colleges, or self-directed PD, which places more responsibility on the teacher. So 
what we will focus uh, in the latter part of this webinar is more on the self-directed PD, something that you can do on your own, but something that is flexible and, of course, free and quality. Okay, to so those who are on Zipping, um, could you please share what types of professional development have you engaged in during this pandemic since 2020 until now? Could you please share us? On Zipping. Okay. Some have engaged in online courses. That's wonderful. Self-directed. Okay, yeah, webinars. Yeah, okay, me too. I'm a webinarian. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm being using this word. Okay, webinars, MOOC, online course. Okay, that's wonderful. The best thing about this is we have been doing it, right? We are struggling. We've been doing so many challenging things. But aside from that, we are still finding time to engage in PD. So that's wonderful. Good job. Good job. But we cannot just join any professional development program that may be available. According to uh, Huckley and other authors, before participating in any professional development, we need to assess if this PD is indeed effective. And they provided some parameters. Number one, access. Again, this is applicable for online okay, uh, professional development as well. Access. It should be accessible okay, using apps or sites or whatever content, the quality of content, and opportunity for interaction among participants is also important. And the, the speaker, the resource speaker should be uh, experienced, seasoned, and authority of the topic, and opportunity for collaboration. One criticism for professional development is that sometimes it's only given once one time, big time. After that, no follow-up. So according to these authors, uh, effective PD should promote collaboration even beyond the event and sustainability. It's not just a one-time event. It could be recurring, there are follow-ups. Now, did you ever think about teaching or learning without technology? Just imagine if this pandemic happened in 1980s or 1990s, right? Uh, not much of the technology that we enjoy this time, but we're very lucky still, right? That despite of this problem that we have, we are in the fourth industrial revolution which has given us opportunities to connect with people from diverse backgrounds, from the different parts of the world, and to access education. Things that we didn't enjoy in the past. These days, one theory of learning that is being described by, by the literature is Connectivism. This is a type of learning. Aside from, we know that constructivism, right? Connectionism, cognitivism. These days, they say that we are more on connectivism, which is a description of our learning process through web based technology. And it provides us the so called rhizomatic learning which means that everything is in network, right? Think about this one. Right now we're, we're in a Zoom and this talk is also shared live via the FEU FB page. People could click that, could access that, right? That is amazing. There is the interconnectivity the accessibility, it's 
rhizomatic, it's connectivist. And that is one of the wonders of the digital PD. We also have the access to online educational resources, which are free materials, allowing us to retain, reuse, revise, remix, or even redistribute the materials that we access. And these OERs have given us opportunities to engage in open educational practices that we will share with you. These open educational practices are accessible and open to all. We use this to innovate and to improve our practices in our own work context. And with the current situation, we are in a um, web-based learning already. It is also important that we start focusing on improving our professional learning network. First, okay, I know you have a gadget, you have a phone. What's in your phone? Do you have the learning apps or do you have the mobile game apps? Okay, it's important. And which YouTube channels do you subscribe? To whom do you connect with? Okay, it's important. You can check your own PLN or professional learning network because this will also define your access to knowledge. Especially during this pandemic, it is important that we go beyond pedagogy and andragogy and proceed to the eutagogical level of learning. This is more on self-directed learning uh, where we exercise our control and autonomy in choosing what professional development to engage because we know and we believe that it is useful for us. It's also important that we engage in professional learning communities such as the one that we will share later. It's a group of people sharing and critically interrogating their practice in an ongoing, reflective, collaborative, inclusive, learning-oriented, cross-promoting way. More than ever, this pandemic has uh, allowed us to appreciate the need to connect, reconnect, and interconnect with fellow educators and professionals. We need one another. We need one another to learn with and from so that our uh, collective knowledge, our sharing could help us address the elephant in the room that is COVID-19. It is also said that schools with strong teacher communities have higher student achievement. Do you agree with that? But sadly, research shows that some schools lack strong teacher, bi teacher bind. And this also results in poorer student achievement. Okay, some teachers choose to just work on their own. While in some schools, teachers who collaborate, cooperate, and work together as one research show provide a better school climate and it translates in better student outcomes. Teachers using collaborative practices are more innovative in the classroom, have higher job satisfaction and hold stronger and self-efficacy beliefs. That's why we will share with you later our group, what we do, how we collaborate, how we share knowledge with one another. And this also translates in our practices. Now we will proceed to the opportunities. I've been talking about the importance of having professional development, especially during this pandemic. So we will be sharing with you online professional development that you can use immediately. In particular, 
we will share with you some opportunities from the online professional English network or open, which is uh, provided for free by the US Department of State. And in the Philippines, we collaborate with the Regional English Language Office to access all of the professional development programs that they offer for all Filipinos and other nationalities across the world. Some of these are live webinars, MOOCs, and free resources. The first one that we've been doing is the American English Live. It's a teacher development series through Facebook Live sessions every other Wednesday. It's a very interactive event that can be participated by all educators across the globe. The topics here could be very interesting for some of you, such as online teaching, 21st century teaching, student classroom management, student engagement, teaching with technology, and many more. And it is sustainable. It's not a one-time event. It's a series. In fact, <clears throat> I'd like to share with you, we are now in series 11. This is open. Okay, we have just finished uh, session one for series 11, last May 5. But on May 19, look at the topic, motivating with gamification, benefits and caution. The previous topic was making online learning three-dimensional. That was really interesting for me as an online uh, educator. Okay, but this week, uh, gamification to be delivered by Ms. Deborah Healy. Please watch uh, for her because she will be also speaking with us, with Far Eastern University very soon in our General Education International Forum. Okay, and um, <clears throat> okay, planning productive conversations, adventures in grammar, the art of running dictation, uh, virtual grammar instruction, and many more. Okay, I'll be sharing with you the link. It's only one hour of your time, but the content is high quality and very practical, can be used in your own practice. It's delivered by TESOL experts in the US. There are opportunities to engage with facilitators and with fellow educators across the globe. And the best part is just via Facebook Live. It's sustainable because the sessions are recorded you can access the sessions on Facebook or in the YouTube channel, American English YouTube channel. Um, for instance, if you're having a, a low internet connection, okay, bad connection, you can just go to the uh, archives. Okay, all sessions are here and available. Of course, you can also get your completion badges such as this one. I already have so many of this. And for those who are wanting to have certificates, completing at least four webinar in a series will also afford you a certificate from the Office of English Language Programs, U.S. Department of State through the U.S. Embassy in the Philippines. Isn't it amazing? Okay, who among you here have experienced that? I'm sure I, I have some friends here who, are, who have been doing that. Okay, now I have another guest. She is a public schools district supervisor of the schools division office of Pasig City and also a MOOCamp leader from Pasig, Ms. Karen Villanueva. Mom Karen, are you here? Uh, I know you've been engaging in live webinar series. Is it? effective for professional development? Ms. Karen, are you here? You can unmute.
Okay. Me, uh, I, I think uh, because we, we chatted a while ago, she's having some uh, tasks. So maybe we can get back to her later. Thank you. And a very important uh, online professional development opportunity that we would like to share with you is the massive open online course. Who among you here, could you uh, thumbs up in your Zoom? Who among you here have already taken a MOOC or is particular about MOOCs or massive open online courses? These are free online courses for everyone. May I see? Wow, there are a lot. That's great. Okay, great job on you. Okay, just some numbers. Okay, look at this one. At present, there are all more than 180 million students enrolled in MOOCs from 190 from 950 universities around the world. And there are six, more than 16,000 available courses. And there are even some micro-credentials and degrees, and even masters, masters, master degrees. And what's beautiful about this one is it's accessible. You can use your desktop, laptop, tablet, and mobile phone to learn, right? I'm sure some of you have already heard about Udacity, Coursera, Khan Academy, edX, Udemy, and so on. All of these are example MOOC platforms. In particular, in 2020, MOOCs have picked up and responded to the COVID-19 pandemic. There was an increase of 644%. Okay, So many people engaged in online education through MOOCs. Why can't we? Right? We have a group called MOOC Camp Philippines, and we will share with you very specific example, how we do it. This is not an exclusive group. This is open for everyone. You know, you can learn on your own, right? You can learn on your own. You can manage your time. But it's priceless if you become part of a certain group and see and meet like-minded individuals, educators, professionals, learning with you, journeying with you, things become lighter and happier and more rewarding. Because aside from learning from the courses, we also learn from one another. I'll be showing you some photos, how we, we, we do that. So look at this, teachers from across the Philippines, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, engaging in professional development. It's beyond the certificate. It's beyond the, the paper. It's more on engaging with fellow educators, being in one community, feeling the community, learning together, helping one another, um, establishing professional networks. We also have Mukher uh, uh, partners in Cambodia, right? In Taiwan. And of course, we're, we're thankful for the US Department of State because of this. At present, okay, just yesterday, we started another online professional development journey together. Teachers from the Philippines, from Cambodia, from Japan, from Taiwan, learn together online. So we are facing a crisis with the pandemic, but it should not stop us from growing. That's because of the global collaboration. I have here a message from our regional English language officer, Dr. Carlin Velez, okay, giving us a very quick message on uh, the opportunities provided by the U.S. Department of State. Let's hear Dr. Carleen. Hello, I'm Carleen curley Velez, Regional English Language Officer based in Washington, D.C. I am so happy for this opportunity to speak virtually to all of you. Congratulations to the organizers of this webinar. I would like to acknowledge Mr. Romaldo Mabuan, 
for being a resource speaker in this webinar. Mr. Mabuan is an American English Online Professional English Network or Open Program alumnus and one of our leading massive open online course or MOOC camp facilitators in the Philippines. Like Mr. Mabuan, you too can avail yourself of the free American English resources and opportunities that you can find at the American English website. I encourage all of you to take the American English MOOCs and participate in MOOC camps and the American English Live series webinars, especially during this difficult time for your personal and professional development. Again, these resources are absolutely free. I hope you will encourage your friends and colleagues to do the same. You can find the latest course offerings in the resources and programs tab on the AmericanEnglish.state.gov webpage. I would like to reassure you that the U.S. Embassy in the Philippines through Regional English Language Office Manila is here to support teachers' professional development. Again, thank you and enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Dr. Carly. Okay. Some of the partner universities of the, the free courses that we are sharing with you are this. These are top-notch universities in the world. So some people in the past, especially before COVID-19, would just say, ah, it's online only, online lang. But we, we beg to disagree. Uh, most of these courses are uh, div div created by uh, the top 1% universities in the world, such as Arizona State University, University of Pennsylvania, uh, George Mason University, and so on. In fact, we have already completed several courses in the past, TESOL, teaching grammar, professional development for teacher trainers. And the good news is that uh, most of these courses are being offered, being rerun every year. So I'll be sharing with you the link so that you too if, um, could, could avail of this one. These are all free. Okay, now we have another colleague here from Phnom Penh, Cambodia, uh, Sir J. Ian Kapuan. He's an educator, an OFW there. Uh, he's been engaging in professional development also, especially using massive open online courses. In fact, he, uh, the, the MOOC camps there have become a bridge for the OFWs in, in Cambodia to unite. Okay, Sir Ian, are you here? Here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much, Sir Mabu, for inviting me to join this webinar. I am J. Ian Kapungan, current, currently based here in Phnom Penh, the Kingdom of Cambodia. I do believe that MOOCs or the massive open online courses are effective in um, quality professional development opportunities, um, especially for us overseas Filipino teachers here in Cambodia. It gives us an opportunity to refresh and enhance our teaching skills, especially when we do not get much internal intervention from our workplaces. And because MOOCs are free, it hooks us to enroll and learn or update our skills whenever we get available courses provided by OPEN of the Regional English Language Office. Um, aside from personal growth, MOOCs also provided us an opportunity to make our community stronger by coming together and helping each other. Because of MOOCs, we are able to certify more than 500 teachers since we started in March of 2018 and we are still continuing and will never stop taking MOOC courses. So thank you so much, Sir Mabu. Thank you very much, Sir Ian. Yeah. 
I really appreciate and I look up to him as well for, for what he's doing in Cambodia, for sharing opportunities for fellow educators. We also have another friend from Dev Ed Manila, an e-teacher alumnus of the U.S. Department of State and an AMUCAMP leader uh, who could share with us the impact of MOOCs to his personal and professional development, Mr. Albert Navava. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Professor Mabuwan. Um, our friends from different parts of the world who are joining us for this particular session. I'll be marrying the two, uh, both professional and uh, personal, uh, the impacts of MOOC, okay? Um, I gain friends. When I say friends, the circle becomes bigger, okay? May it be in um, elementary, secondary, tertiary uh, levels both public and private. In short, you are establishing linkages. Next, I was able to present paper together with Professor Mabuwan and Professor Matala at the University of uh, Hong Kong and also American Institute in Taiwan where we helped them set up their, or we trained them how to do MOOC and set up their um, own MOOC camps, of course, guided by uh, the tenets of MOOC camps. Um, of course, thank you for uh, the mentoring, Professor Mabuan, Dr. Rebecca Sagot, Ms. Uh, Rina Angeles for the inspiration uh, for uh, what uh, inspiring us always. Apart from that, I was able, um, I was uh, given the privilege, okay, because uh, I was chosen to do group, a uh, global online course where only 25 representatives coming from different parts of the world can participate and finish this one. Thus, um, I became an e-teacher alumnus. And of course, um, I was also invited to attend TESOL Convention 2021, thanks to Rilo Manila, US Embassy in the Philippines. In terms of classroom practices, um, I was able to integrate uh, MOOC into my class. Of course, you have to look at your course syllabus and find the alignment. In the Philippine context, we have what we call your uh, most essential learning competencies uh, because uh, the, the Department of Education trimmed down in response to the pandemic, uh, trimmed down the competencies. So we have to align. Okay? In my case, I'm teaching grade 10 students uh, I search on the Coursera, the platform, uh, one of the MOOC platforms, um, what could be uh, matching, okay? And I was able to hit on that particular course given by the Washington Univers University of Washington that is uh, speaking to persuade. And the students were able to enjoy the course on the onset, of course, uh, uh, they are reluctant, but guided by the principal or the tenets that we are practicing in MOOC okay, and MOOC camps, they were able to finish uh, the course. Okay? And apart from the course itself, we have extension. Okay, The students were exposed how to do Pecha Kucha online, Flipgrid online, and so on and so forth. So the explosion of knowledge is really um, heartwarming, very inspiring, okay? Thanks to this one, we are responding to that British framework, okay? Uh, the integration part, okay? Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity to share with the community, FEU community, and the different parts of the world. Thank you very much, Sir Albert. Yeah, you're already doing the integration. Have you forgot to share your master's degree thesis at the Philippine Normal University, right? Yes, that one too. <laughs> Has also something to do with MOOCs, okay? So beyond professional development, there are personal uh, growth and the students are also benefiting. Thank you, that's wonderful. And we have one, I'm not sure if he is here, Professor Thomas Kaufman from the University of Indiana Poly, a MOOC camp leader in Taiwan. Uh, because of my engagement in professional development, uh, I was able to meet uh, different professionals as well. So that's one of the wonders of engaging in a professional learning community. Um, 
Thomas, are you here? <laughs> Maybe he's not yet here, he's not responding. Okay, we'll proceed. Aside from personal and professional development, um, the professional, uh, the online professional development through MOOCs or MOOC camps have also uh, impacted teachers, communities across the Philippines. We have here Dr. Rina Angeles from DepEd San Juan Division and one of the lead MOOC camp facilitators in the Philippines to share how MOOC camps have benefited teachers. Hello, good afternoon, Dr. Mabuan. Hi. Am I audible? I cannot see myself yes. on the camera. I'm sorry for that. I'm using my phone right now. But thank you so much for the invitation to share. And I love hearing those are sharing coming from different leaders around the Philippines and across the Philippines. And even I heard sharing from a MOOC leader in Cambodia. So what we would love most here in MOOC camps is we build a community of practice. And in this community of practice, it, this is not just for teachers, for future teachers as well. We provide here a space for collaboration and a space for discussion. And even up to now, even though it's pandemic, we are actually not limiting ourselves to collaborate, collaborate online, but we also do sharing our part. That's just like what we are doing right now. So also in this kind of community, in this kind of activity as well, we are not just gaining papers and certificates as you mentioned a while ago. So we are not just after for the papers, we are not just after for the promotion, but also we are doing that beyond these papers and beyond this certificate. It is because we have, we, we, feel, we feel this self-satisfaction, right? And also the professional engagement as well. All right, so I think my camera is reversed. I am so sorry for that. It's because I'm using my phone only today. My laptop hangs a while ago, just like what happened to Miss Karen. But once again, thank you so much. This is all for our self-improvement and professional improvement. That is why we are building community of practice for teachers and for educators around the world. Marami salamat, Dr. Mabuan, and to the rest of the organization or organizers of FEU. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Rina Angeles, one of the staunch advocates of continuing professional development in the Philippines. Thank you for sharing. And there are also opportunities for us. If you are uh, an educator planning to respond to the, to the um, uh, British framework uh, fourth stage, which is integration, it's possible. So let's get some insights or ideas how you could integrate your learning, uh, online learning into your own curriculum. We have here Ms. Diane Maure from DepEd Manila Division, also a MOOC leader. Ayan. Good afternoon, sir. Am I, is my voice loud and clear? When yes, I'm using my phone Diane. right now. Ayan. So good afternoon. Uh, like what Mr. Mabuwan said, I'm a MOOC camp leader from Manila, and I would like to share my experience in integrating the MOOC camp in our in the public school curriculum. Okay, particularly in the public school cur curriculum because I am teaching in senior high school in Manila. So back in 2018, if I'm not mistaken, sir, um, when the media literacy course under the University of Pens Pennsylvania was offered, I immediately grabbed the opportunity to create two MOOC camps. And that is one for the teachers. Okay, So one for the teachers and one for uh, my students, both the grade 11 and grade 12. So uh, during that time, I'm handling um, media literacy. So I really aligned because um, there is a Co there's a course in senior high school or there's a subject in senior high school uh, under media literacy and it's really uh, the the course under Coursera which is offered by University of Pennsylvania is aligned with uh, the curriculum as well. Okay, makikita nyo yung, uh, yung parallel. Okay? They, they, they are on a parallel path. And then um, Actually, I invited the uh, grade 11 and grade 12 during that time. And then after reading the, the curriculum guide and the, the curriculum in the in that course, well, I asked uh, Mr. Navarra to conduct uh, to help me conduct the MOOC orientation with the with both parents and the 
the students, and of course, we also ask the permission from the administrators. And then, of course, the, the whole uh, experience was really fun, exciting, and interactive. It enhanced actually the critical thinking. I want to emphasize the critical thinking skills of the students. In that course, they evaluated different types of media, like news articles, advertisements, TV shows. And it enhanced also their reading, writing, and oral communication. Because uh, there, in, that, in that particular course, there are written, uh, written tasks and speaking tasks. Okay. So it's not just a, it's not a passive kind of learning. They really have to, to create vlogs. They really have to interact with other uh, MOOC participants as well. Even they are students, they are really participating with, with other professionals. That time, kaya talagang, wow, sabi nila. Ang lagi nila sabi, mom, wow. Okay. Iba yung naging experience nila. So, it was also a memorable experience for me. Why? Because it's beyond learning. Because uh, in MOOC camp, they are offering service learning. After every after every course, at the end of uh, at the end of it, there will be a service learning. And part of that is uh, my students created videos about personal hygiene. Of course, uh, it's for the uh, children for payatas. Remember that, uh, sir, when we had our uh, what's this? Uh, outreach program in Payatas. And uh, you highlighted that uh, the personal hygiene talagang so even before the pandemic happened, talagang yung hand washing, it, it was uh, advertised already by, by Mukam. Talagang nakakatawa. And then uh, they use the knowledge that they gain from that course in creating their uh, pamphlets, in their in creating their uh, videos for those uh, for those uh, children in Payatas. Para sa kanila talaga achievement yon. It was a really it was really memorable as a whole. So I'm really thankful. Why? Because Sir Mabu personally it prepared me in this time of new normal. Okay, when uh, when the pandemic. Uh, hit our country, diba? e everyone, oh, what are we going to do? Ako, parang, ah, I have experienced that already. How to create blended, when they introduced the, before they introduced the blended learning, talaga naiyak ako kasi, ay, nagawa ko na siya sa klasiko. So, it, it was a first-hand experience. Thank you, Sir Mabu. So, that's wow. it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Miss Diane. That's, so innovative that's so inspiring right and your students enjoyed i agree with you it somehow pre prepared us for this situation in the pandemic before the webinars um <clears throat> mushroomed in 2020 we've been doing the american english live webinar series and the series still open until now so I'm showing, I'm, I'm giving the links later for those who are interested in doing it. Thank you, Ms. Diane. Um, <clears throat> a massive integration uh, is also possible. In fact, in 2018, in my former university, Lyceum de Philippines University, Manila, uh, more than 1,000 university students completed the University of Pennsylvania's English for Career Development MOOC. We collaborated six instructors of us at LPU. So I hope uh, we can also do that here at Far Eastern University. And there are also opportunities for community outreach. I think this is really important. So we have here two educators from DepEd Lipa and DepEd Oriental Mindoro. We begin with Ms. Leia Kabar, DepEd Lipa Division. Uh, how um, professional development has allowed them to go to the communities, share to the communities. All right. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Miss Leia from the Division of Lipa. Oh, I'm a DepEd teacher. So I'm also one of the product of MOOC Camp. So I'm currently a MOOC Camp leader from Batanga. So how MOOC Camps became a way to reach out to more teachers and communities. Uh, we can say that MOOCs, as of now, makes a very excellent resources for educators just like me. Both, uh, both as a means of 
improving my own knowledge and teaching skills and at the same time content you know we can we can really use it in uh I can really use it in my teaching career. I usually attended webinars from Rello, as mentioned by Dr. Mabuan, and also the American English for Educators. Most of the topics can be really applied in my own classes too. We, we also want to have quality content lessons with digitalized learning. I do value quality content lessons. And most of the teachers from my province, from my province, Batangas, they value professional development. That's why when I told them that we have free MOOC, free courses online, they are very excited to attend. That's why we have a very successful graduation last, uh, what's the year? Last 2018, let me correct. Yeah, yeah, last 2018. It's, um, it's really a massive graduation. Uh, Batangas, Mindoro, Laguna, and Cavite. Yeah. And then also the MOOC camp also demonstrate the power of learning communities. We also have peer tutoring during that time. Uh, before pandemic, we have what we call community outreach program. Uh, we give back to the community because the emb U.S. Embassy gave us this a very rare opportunity to, at to attend an international course. So we, we have peer tutoring. Sometimes we... We, we managed to have uh, reading, storytelling for a particular community or we sponsored a particular school. That's before pandemic. Uh, and also teachers across the globe, especially the OFW educators become more aware that MOOCs is really another way to have professional development. And also the MOOC camp right now, it reaches out to all educators we are i guess we i believe we are really multiplying you know comes shares various educational strategies we have educators from public to private educational institution who are also sharing their best practices to us indeed mook camp is a blessing not only to 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 the teachers but also to the communities we are where we are we belong and at the same time, uh, pinaka gusto ko online from MOOC is, I know, from, Mabu, from Dr. Mabuan is, uh, that's why MOOC camp is caring is sharing. That's it. So thank you so much. Wow. Thank you very much. One of our uh, staunch advocates for professional development, Ms. Leia Kabar. And another very uh, inspiring community outreach um activities were done in Mindoro okay reaching out to the uh, ethnic groups of Mangyan okay Miss uh, Margaret Bru are you here hello sir good afternoon yes, I hope you can good hear afternoon. me yes <laughs> I just want to share my yes I just want to share my insights about the impact of MOOC camps here in Oriental Mindoro as a tool for professional development so MOOC open, open doors for diversified learning opportunities that creates a sense of professional growth that you cannot just get from a library or a book. So MOOC creates the sense of uniqueness in terms of learning new techniques that are relatable in a virtual environment. It is like a strong foundation that empowers ourselves as individuals and professionals. So it has become the avenue of exciting learning that becomes wisdom and skills. It truly widens my outlook about teaching and learning process since I am planning to pursue my teaching career in the future. So I am currently working as an administrative assistant to at Oriental Mindoro. So uh, to get a professional development, so I'm, I'm I always join MOOC camps right now. So when we had our service journey activities to the different schools here in Oriental Mindoro, uh, namely Villa Cerveza High School, Siguran Mangyan School in Victoria, and Villa Pagas National High School at Nagan Extension at Bansud, which most of the learners are Mangyan. If you're familiar with Mangyan, um, they are the indigenous people of Oriental Mindoro. So when we visited the place, we feel the excitement and eagerness of the students for whatever we could share with them. So MOOCers were able to share what we had learned and engage in a collaborative discussion between the students. And MOOCs are definitely beneficial and an asset to the education because the certificate is just a bonus or an award 
but the knowledge and information that we can get is like a pile of gold, etc. That is certain. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Margaret, for sharing how professional development through Massive Open Online Courses has allowed you to grow not only uh, personally and professionally, but also to reach out to the communities, to the community outreach. And of course, there are opportunities for doing research. For instance, uh, in the recent Peaceful International Convention, uh, uh, Rebecca, Rina, and I were able to do a research presentation through MOOCs. It's also possible to do a publication. So I, I was able to publish a book chapter in MOOCs in a Routledge uh, uh, book. <clears throat> and finally, uh, we'd like to share with you the current courses that you can do right now. Okay, it's open, it's free. Okay, all you need to do is your interest, your passion for learning, your willingness to grow. Okay, the first one is English for Media Literacy for Educators. It's open until June 13. It's only five modules. Look at the modules, Introductions to English for Media Literacy for Educators, Approaches and Strategies, Managing Student Media Consumption, Language for Teaching, um, English for Media Literacy, and uh, media literacy unit planning. Uh, personally, this is very uh, useful for me. I, I teach communication subjects, particularly purpose of communication. So there are so many chapters that, or modules in our syllabus, uh, Commission Higher Education, that uh, can make use of this course. Okay, so please take the advantage, the, the chance. Okay, you can scan the QR code or you can watch out for the link that I'll be sharing at the end of this one. Another very useful course that is open now, sorry, it has to be corrected, May, June to July 26. Yeah, it's until July 26. Assessment of English language learners. When the pandemic struck, um, we were also rattled. Like, how do I evaluate, assess my students? Okay, so look at the contents of this, of this uh, free course. Purposeful assessment, collecting and using data, alternative assessment, uh, one of my favorites. Student engagement, very useful. It's difficult to engage our students these days, right? Especially if we're in a digital uh, setup. And making assessment fun, okay? So if you have two to three hours a week, just go for it. Take the course, it's free. You can download all of the modules and you can also get a free certificate. All right. Um, and finally, before we, we, we end this one, uh, I'm sharing you free handouts and materials, okay, which I recently got from the TESOL 2021 International Convention. There are handouts from advocacy, applied linguistics, culture, language assessment, and so on. I'm also sharing a free TESOL book from uh, Ronald Carter and David Noonan, and another free ebook, the grammar book from uh, Marianne Celsi Morcia and Diane Larson Freeman. Okay, I'll be sharing the links in the chat box. And finally, I'd like to invite you to the TESOL 2020 Convention and English Language Expo, the largest in the world, okay, for English language educators happening in a hybrid mode, face-to-face -face and online in Pennsylvania, USA, March 2022. You can submit your paper until June 1, okay? And to end, I've shared, I think, uh, so many things already. I'd like to share Jen Cotton Dana's line, who dares to teach must never cease to learn. We may be uh, having hectic schedule, but lifelong learning should be our lifetime event. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate your presence today. Okay, uh, Dr. Chini, do we still have time for some questions? Yes, thank you so much, Sir Mabu. And thank you also to our friends from MOOC. Um, 
I really uh, had a lot of inspiring stories this afternoon. No, it's just it's not just my head that is um, full of information, but my heart is also um, full of love because of these people that have shared this afternoon. Um, they have actually given me uh, sort of reflections about about my life as a teacher that we don't just rest ourselves at the four corners of our classroom or like in our case right now, um, in front of our screen, but we do extend ourselves, right? By offering ourselves to others, by training people, even if it means training them for free, um, getting across for outreach activities, just to reach out with our um, brothers and sisters. So really, thank you so much. Um, right now, I'm sure um, Sir Mabu, we have um, some friends here from more than 100 participants here in Zoom. You're nearly, uh, actually, this is quite a large number of audience that we have for, for a short lecture like this. So I'm really happy. And I'm sure they have some questions. And uh, in our chat box, you're already raining um, inquiries, right? Um, about these materials that Sir Mabu had shared. And I've shared uh, the links already. Yes, the links have already been shared um, via our chat box. So to our Zoom participants, simply go over our chat box and copy the links to the free materials that Sir Mabu had shared with us. How generous of him really to share with us these materials, right? Okay, so um, if you have any inquiries, maybe there's something that you're curious about um, and uh, you'd like to ask Sir Mabu maybe some pieces of advice on how to um, jumpstart this, um, this, how was it, how, how was it called earlier? I saw one in the chat box, something like, I, I found a newly coined term, Sir Mabu, something that starts with mook. And it's a very interesting um, coinage about about MOOC. Uh, maybe I just, yeah, not yeah, MOOCing a difference. Yeah, and how, how do we go and uh, go about um, MOOCing a difference? So while our other participants here in Zoom and maybe on Facebook that are currently watching us via FEU, FB Live are thinking about um, some possible questions or thinking about um, what to ask from Sir Mabu. Maybe I can jumpstart or you can start this, this um, discussion or this Q&A. Uh, like Sir Mabu, I'm sure some of, our, some of our participants here and other teachers, I know, I know that MOOC isn't new, you know, I mean, it's been there since years and I think it's through MOOC that we've met each other. That's why, that's what I can remember. Uh, I know that they've heard this, but some of them do not have the, the maybe the courage to, to try it. Because it would entail computer skills, you know, that's probably what they're thinking about. So what's the, what's the advice that you can give them? I know we've had a lot of interesting stories already. That's enough to entice everybody. But the major question is, how do we jumpstart this? How do we go go about this? Yeah, thank you. Um, first, you can actually uh, click the links that I shared with you. You may uh, join a Facebook group that MOOC Camp Philippines, where uh, we share free uh, courses and links. You may also visit the official Facebook page of the Regional English Language Office of the you, uh, Regional English Language Office of the U.S. Embassy in the Philippines. Okay, they um, post free courses and the enrollment links are provided. Yeah, you may be thinking, "Oh my God, I, I can't do this. That's online. I don't have the internet connection." Well, it's not really that difficult. It's easy to sign up, just like signing up on Facebook. And it doesn't consume much of your time, uh, two to three hours a week on your free time, okay, can be used. The interface is also very friendly. There are modules, some quizzes, multiple choice discussion forums to engage with fellow educators around the world. Plus, there are opportunities for you to download the materials in advance 
uh, especially if you have a weak connection, um, you can download the materials in advance and then study the materials offline. That is possible. But um, if you plan to do that alone, that's also possible. But I would like to recommend that you try to join uh, Bukang Philippines, for example. It's free, it's open to everyone, public and private sectors, primary, secondary, and tertiary levels, because um, it gives us some sense of belongingness, being part of a community of practice. And when you are in a community of practice, you gain strength, courage, and motivation, inspiration to keep on going, because there are people like you having uh, to tread in the same journey. So it's actually very easy, very manageable. Believe me, <laughs> we've already finished so many. Try, right? To really try. Yeah. That's the very first step. Try, try it by first trying the link that was sent by Sir Mabu. And um, also in addition to that, Sir Mabu, you know, when I, I, I can still remember the first time I saw you and the, the, the succeeding uh, meetups that we had. You know, I've always been wanting to ask this question. This wisdom, this overflowing um, volunteerism or feeling of volunteering, this, this I, I'm calling it like a charity that you're, you've been doing. I mean, I've experienced it. I know it very well, how, how, you're, how, you, how generous you are. Sir Mabu, where is this drive coming from? I mean, I mean, you and all these people that have spoken this afternoon. I, th 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 I mean, okay, to everyone that's watching right now, Sir Mabu actually told me that he would invite people, but I didn't know that that I would see a group of people that are really so, I mean, that is overflowing with passion and generosity. So I really would like to know, Sir Mabu, where is this generosity coming from? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's paying forward. I would like to acknowledge uh, Miss Rebecca. Miss Rebecca, are you still here? Miss Rebecca Sagot, I think. Yes, she is still it. here. Yeah, <laughs> she started it all. That's why I would call her my MOOC mother. Um, in the past, I, would, I was already very uh, active in taking online courses, uh, going to conferences. I, I am a conference junkie for myself and for my own practices. But when I uh, saw Ms. Rebecca, as she shared their experiences in Davao City, I was inspired to go beyond myself. And I realized that because we have access to these opportunities and we have fellow educators who don't have the access, especially to the underserved areas, the, um, far-flung areas, why not exert some effort and share? It's just sharing, right? There's no money involved. Although time is spent, but uh, the, the happiness, right? The fulfillment is priceless. I think that's what keeps us going on. Indeed, Mr. Inspiring. Mr. Romualdo, you are the best thing that happened to my life because <laughs> when I see you doing something and uh, exceeding my expectations about those that I've uh, I've been teaching about doing things and doing something, but you perform ex more splendidly, and uh, I am happy when I accomplish something, but I become happier because I know that we also bring along others to accomplish and to fulfill something along with us. And I know that if we still continue to teach others how to teach another, then this can probably make the world a better place to live in. And then we yeah. all have the opportunities to grow and all together also grow. And uh, not just by one by two, but we are bringing along others. That's right. Actually, we have uh, lines in our group, right? Service beyond learning, learning beyond borders, and living beyond self. Yeah. 
So when you realize that, you feel better, you feel blessed. Yes, to the mother of Thank you so much, ma'am. So, um, I think um, we've been uh, we've had uh, a lot of comments in our chat box. They're not questions. They're actually there is, I think, questions. one question. Yeah, yeah. From Can Michael. Michael. All right, uh, let me read it to you, Sir Mabu. Um, good afternoon, Dr. Mabu. Do you think that universities and educational institutions in our country is ready to acknowledge and credit courses for educators who took up MOOC? Yeah. Actually, this is also a common question and a concern for some. Personally, all of the courses that I have from uh, completing massive open online courses have been um, used, have been welcomed by my institutions. Well, I am in the private sector. For the private sector, um, it, it actually varies. Okay, some, some divisions, uh, Ms. Agut knows this. In Davao, uh, MOOCs are well acknowledged. So, uh, they have guidelines for this. So the certificates are accepted. With PRC, Professional Reg uh, Regulatory Commission, we have the self-directed learning. There are guidelines to be followed. And when you comply, your certificates are also acknowledged. But uh, acknowledgement, recognition of MOOC certificates is actually a concern. It's a global concern. Because some education, some institutional uh, organization, some institutions uh, may not acknowledge, but <clears throat> because of the, they think the, the quality, for instance. But if you're going to look at the background of the course developers, which are reflected in the certificate, uh, you know, universities such as University of Pennsylvania, Washington University, Harvard University, plus uh, with MOOC camps, for example, in our case, we have the U.S. Department of State. These names speak of quality, okay? But we, we, um, we call on, still, we call on educational institutions uh, to welcome okay these developments i think we have to keep up with the trends we even have micro credentials badges of certificates with qr codes but i believe that some institutions are not keeping up with these developments so we are calling on our uh, institutions to to uh, maybe revisit their uh, performance evaluation matrices guidelines and start welcoming these new platforms for professional development, especially that they do not have to spend money for you. You're doing it on your own, right? Self-directed learning. So the more that they should recognize it and appraise. You suddenly made me reflect about the importance of um, advocacies and meeting or seeing people that would be willing to listen to these advocacies because right now I think that in addition to this concern of Sir Michael it's not just an in institutional or a university concern but this can also be a national concern uh, for policies that have to be implemented maybe um, it's about time also for the national government to to take a look at the advantage or the benefits that um, online courses like this, self-directed courses that 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 um, that can bring, you know, that can bring to just the individual, not just the institution, but also with the nation. But for now, I think we'll be resting ourselves with the idea that the the benefit is indirect, more than the certificate that that any person can offer to a university or to a target institution that they are applying for. I think it's more of the skill and the, the knowledge or the background that they have after engaging with online courses like this, which will, I think, will be evident by the time that 
um, they they would see and they would realize that these skills, these talent, this person uh, that that they have in front of them is because of the the professional development or the self directed professional development that the person had. Miss Jenny, yes, uh, I yes. think if these leaders that you are referring to here would also try MOOCing, then they will realize how valuable are the learnings gained from the MOOCs. Uh, just like in my case, uh, in the division where I am the assistant superintendent, uh, it's part of the KRAs of our teachers in the professional standards for teachers because it's included in one of the strands that they have to uh, provide themselves with professional development opportunities. And that is why we credit MOOCs as part also of their performance rating at the end of the school year. So in some instances, uh, they may not be able to get a CPD unit for participating to a MOOC, but such certificates will not be in vain because they can be used as support documents for performance rating at the end of the school year. And much more, the learning experience also that they gain from joining the MOOC. When we started MOOCing actually in 2014, oh, uh, the information superhighway that time was a road less traveled and the cyberspace was such a lonely planet. We just didn't realize then that we are now in the pandemic and all those who have tried MOOCing got some easy access to resources and uh, have uh, didn't have any difficulty at all transitioning from the traditional teaching to the current way of teaching now that we are in the pandemic. So um, the benefits may be in some ways indirect, but uh, in some way this have uh, helped a lot of teachers, especially on those areas where um, were the, the opportunities for professional development are very minimal because uh, of the cost of attending seminars or webinars for that matter. So that's it, Ms. Chini. Hopefully our leaders will really try so they can see for themselves. I guess that's when we say that uh, we learn things by doing, right? <laughs> so if, if they'll just have a try, they'd be able to probably really appreciate what's, what's behind this, right, ma'am, Rebecca? Speaking of um, leaders, now I think we have another question here that's related to leadership and policy. Where Rimanda said, um, Sir Froy, Rimanda, is there a possibility that this these opportunities be lobbied to Step Ed Central Office? I believe this will give positive impact for the teachers' development in the country. Is this a sort of an invitation? <laughs> Maybe I should ask <laughs> uh, Sir Mabu, what's your insight on this? <clears throat> I think Ms. Rebecca could answer this one. Um, in the past, actually, yeah, yeah. In, yeah. Actually, the regional English language, actually, the regional English language officer uh, of the U.S. Embassy in Manila has already um, having in contact with the Under Secretary for Curriculum and Instruction, Yusek uh, San Antonio, especially for some English language programs of the U.S. Embassy. And uh, in fact, they are also partnering with DepEd on the course Teaching Grammar Communicatively, and it's also a MOOC uh, being partnered uh, with the RELO and the DepEd Central Office. But hopefully, uh, comes a time that um, all courses that are being sponsored by the U.S. Department of State through the Regional English Language Office of U.S. Embassy in Manila will be partnered with Central Office so that um, the certificates that shall be gained by the teachers can automatically be credited for under professional development uh, units, CPD units. Somehow, we also would like to dwell on just keeping the MOOCs as... Uh, as a community-based practice because it's the initiatives and the innovations are there. When one is being issued with a memorandum to participate to a MOOC, perhaps that person will participate because he is being ordered. It's different when one participates because there's that need, the, the felt need to really improve oneself professionally. So yung initiatives hindi nawawala, yung innovations hindi nawawala, yung self-drive hindi na nawawala kasi may intrinsic motivation. Unlike 
just being uh, memorandumized to attend professional development. O minsan, uh, one will not have a heart, especially if one does not go through certain process of uh, of leading to what is being learned and then will not go through certain process of giving because uh, in the first place, uh, something great and or greater has been received also. All right. Me? Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so, okay, so I'm 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 thinking really about um how how to go about really institutionalizing this or giving more recognition to this, and I think this is shared by uh, our other our other um, participants in here. Um, Sir Mabu, we have another question here. I think this is uh, a, a very interesting question. How do we become a MOOC leader? Yeah. <clears throat> um, anyone, before I answer that, those who are on zipping, please give us a quick response to adjectives to describe today's session to help us evaluate this one. Um, anyone, this is very important, anyone can be a MOOC leader, but you should be a MOOCer. And uh, so you know the journey and a heart to go beyond yourself because the duties of a MOOC leader would be uh, to facilitate free programs. You will have to spend your time, your energy in collaborating and engaging with people. So if you have that heart, if you have that passion, to go beyond yourself, to serve others, then you can. You can be a MOOC leader. And you are always welcome. I think um, it, it takes recognition, no? first, among, among each other, among ourselves, that uh, we engage into activities like this because we are going through this not just for the certificates but because of the gains that we would have so in addition it would also be um, the response to our question whether our certification would be acknowledged or recognized by our institution or by the government um, is still currently on a case-to-case -case basis because there are institutions that 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 have had that cert level of recognition right because I, that's what i said it requires recognition appreciation so maybe for the national government <laughs> well it's on its way to recognizing this and if there are more believers more mookers perhaps right we are on our way to having this um this kind of professional development being recognized not just nationally as it is already recognized globally so why not recognize it nationally? So um, thank you very much to our participants for engaging with us. And thank you also to our participants um, here in our Zoom coming from our partner university, Adamas University. Thank you also for, um, for engaging with us here in our chat box, truly innovating, enriching, inspiring, and challenging. Just a few of the words that are from our participants. Thank so, you. Mom Rebecca, Thank you for being here. The, yes, and to the rest of our MOOC leaders, and of course to you, Sir Mabu. Um, thank you very much for opening our eyes this afternoon, for giving us a lot of things to reflect about, not just for our career, but also for ourselves. And I do hope that this, um, this lecture that we had this afternoon will reach the floor of our leaders. So that um, they they would they would see the advantage of, of this. Maybe it's about time that they recognize uh, this kind of professional development, and then they recognize these this group of people that that advocates for 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 professional development. And um, with this, um, I think I should lead every one of you to go also aside from doing the evaluation that sir mabu had given to us uh, may i also request that you do the evaluation 
of the overall lecture, the link will be provided to you by our institute's staff. Kindly fill the form at after the event. You can find the form here in our chat box. The form will be open until 7 o'clock this evening so that you can receive your certification. And so, um, again, on behalf of the Institute of Education of Far Eastern University, this is Shini. I would like to thank you, Sir Mabu, all the MOOCers. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Shini. This afternoon for joining friend. us. Yes, uh, all your friends. Wholeheartedly, we thank you. On behalf of Far Eastern uh, University, the Institute of Education, we would like to uh, ask you to join us again for another um, graduate online academic lecture series happening soon, which we will be posting on our Facebook page. So please do visit our Facebook page. Visit also our website, www.fu.edu.ph. Let us engage and let's talk about our plans you know, for for more professional activities. And I look forward also to welcome you in the Institute. So thank you very much, Sir Richmond from EdTech. Group photo. Sir Ian, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Sir Ian, also of MCO for helping us. Thank you. This. Let's have a group photo. Can we invite yes. our participants? I think our opportunity Can you turn on your camera, please? So please turn on your camera. For a minute. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for being here. We hope you got something. We really appreciate it. Um, if you have free time, please learn for yourself, for your students, for your schools and communities. Okay, please smile. Oh, Miss Karen, you're here. Okay, smile, everyone. Three, two, one. Okay, there are. Am I the one? Okay, there are five frames. Five yes. smiles. Okay, keep on smiling. Three, two, one. Hello, Miss May. <laughs> She's here. Hello, Sir Joseph. Three, two, one. <laughs> We're not done yet. Let's have another. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Mabu, keep for smiling. making us part of this activity. My honor, it. my pleasure. Thank you very much. The Karina, Albert, Devin, Miss Karen. Uh, Thank you so much, Sir Mabu. My apologies. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> okay lang po. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Thank you so much. Yeah, I already took our photo. Dr. Pertita, I would like to acknowledge your presence as well. Thank you very much for, your, for bringing your faculty here from Adamas University of India. Thank you. Thank you. And so, congratulations, Sir Mabu. I think um, we can you, call it a day for everyone. <laughs> yeah. See you soon again for another lecture series from the Institute of Education. Chini! So, this is Chini. Mabuhay mga tamara. Mabuhay po. God bless you all.